Hey everyone, in today's video we're going to be looking at Matil UI's hidden component. Now if you haven't watched my two videos on Matil UI's grid, it might be a good idea to familiarize yourself with that before watching this video. And I only say this because those two videos will tell you a lot about the um, breakpoint system which Matil UI uses for the hidden component. And also a lot of the times you're going to be using hidden probably within uh, a grid container. And that's actually how uh, their examples are split up in Matil UI. You can use Use the hidden component with other components, not just grid, but it's most often uh, in the wild used with the grid component. And um, I know I say this a lot, but I want to thank you guys again for all the support you've been giving the channel, all the amazing feedback and comments. Um, I can't even begin to say how grateful I am. And also, this video itself was sponsored, was inspired, sorry, by um, one of the comments I got on one of the previous videos so thank you for that and if you find value in this video please consider liking subscribing leaving a comment I try my best I used to reply to every single comment but there's just so many of them now I can't keep up but I do read each and every single comment so thank you guys a lot for leaving them so let's jump straight into the hidden component basically the hidden component in Matil UI is just a way to toggle as they say here the visibility of the components that are nested within it and the way it works is through breakpoints so essentially what you'll be doing is if you wanted a component to be hidden let's say on any breakpoint that was small or smaller than the small breakpoint then you would wrap it in a hidden um, tag and we can see that in some examples here so for example let's look at these breakpoints uh, these breakpoint down examples over here so for example we have here just a regular application they wrap it um, in pretty much just a div with some typography saying this is what the current width is and then over here is where you where you actually have all the hiddens so for example you can see here hidden xs down and they wrap this paper that has the text xs down inside of it if we were to scroll up we can see we can actually still see xs down here but if I were to slowly take this and make the screen a bit smaller you'll see here that as it gets smaller than XS, it's all of a sudden gone. Oh, where did it go? Uh, oh, it's actually this component. It looks like they even hide the code examples if it gets uh, smaller. But you'll see here that the current width is XS, and therefore they are actually hiding um, the component that was there. So the down components as we look at the API you'll see that there are a ton of different implementations you can have for this. For example, you can have large down large up, medium down, medium up, small down, small up, extra large down, extra large up, and extra small down, extra small up. They're pretty self-explanatory um, in terms of, for example, when you do hidden, you can supply, usually you only want to supply one of these props so it doesn't clash with each other, but when you supply, for example, excess down, everything from excess and down will be hidden. Small down, everything that is, uh, when, this, when the viewport is in the SM, um, breakpoint or lower than that it will be hidden and so on and so forth if you're not too sure on what the breakpoints are um, you can go over in here you can type in default theme and when you look at the default theme object you can see here uh, when you go into the breakpoints object and the values object you can see here they have excess small medium large and XL and this numeric value here is pretty much just the width of the screen in pixels which is the minimum for your screen to be considered that so for example small if your if your uh, viewport if the mod if the browser you are viewing the website at is in between 600 pixels wide and 960 pixels wide it will be considered small if it is within 0 and 600 it will be considered excess if it is 1920 or greater than that your screen size will be considered XL and this hidden is sort of just a really good way to dynamically filter um, exactly what you have so you can also see that you have this only um, so this only is the only prop that's sort of different from all these you know XL up XL down except SM up SM down and pretty much when you pass in one of these uh, things it will essentially hide base only on that viewpoint uh, breakpoint so for example if you pass in small Small, it will only hide on small you can also give it an array for example you could put in that array small and extra large and if for whatever reason you have a, v a case like that where you want to only show stuff uh, only show an element 
on a screen that is not small or not extra large, you can just pass in an array uh, through the only prop. And that is pretty much, I think, all there really is to the hidden component. It's a very um, basic component. It's not too complex like some of the other components we've looked at, but it could be very useful. A lot of the times before I learned about the hidden component, when I wanted to, for example, hide... Um, when I would wanted to hide grid items like they have in here, what I would do is I would pretty much, uh, you know, either have a ternary based on uh, the current breakpoint that the theme is, and then once I learned about hidden, I started to use hidden. So I think it's a really, really, really interesting uh, component. And if you're trying to play around with it, I would recommend on the documentation you can click this little um, edit button right here, this little like pencil. And when you click that, it'll open the example they have there in sandbox.io, which I personally find extremely uh, useful. You can click the demo.js here and you can go ahead and play with any of the code. You can go ahead and play with the resizing of this, for example, and you can see how it works. Um, that's usually how when I'm trying to learn about Matil UI component, I will usually uh, go to their code sandbox, play around with their example, then I'll make my own code sandbox and sort of try to implement the component on my own with sort of a use case of what I'm trying to do. So, um, yeah, hope you guys found value in this video. Uh, it's a pretty short one. The component's pretty basic. But if you did, please consider liking, subscribing, leaving a comment. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm, and it really helps get this channel out there. And I hope everyone is staying safe, and I'll see you all in the next video.